Squibb, manufacturing chemist to the medical profession since 1858, brings you Academy Award. The pictures, the players, the techniques and skills which have won or been nominated for the coveted awards granted each year by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences to each in his field for outstanding achievement. The House of Squibb, makers of the great family of Squibb medicinal products, brings you the Columbia picture, My Sister Eileen, starring Rosalind Russell and Janet Blair, who will play the same roles they created for the screen, and in which Miss Russell was nominated for the 1942 Academy Award. was the two babes from the woods walked hand in hand into Greenwich Village in search of fame, fortune, and a room. We had come to New York from Columbus, Ohio. We meant my typewriter, my ambition to become an author, our hundred dollars, and her ambition to become the Sarah Bernhardt of Broadway. She, here and after, known as her, the blonde bombshell, and other terms of wolf call endearment, was my beautiful sister, Eileen. Whenever I think of those days in Greenwich Village, I hear loud noises like this. What, what was that? What was what? That, that, that noise, Mr. Apopoulos. The whole room shook. That shows you how you will get used to it. I didn't even notice it. Get used to it? Y you mean it happens all the time? You won't even be conscious of it. A little blasting, the new subway they're digging below. You mean they're blasting right underneath us? What are you worrying about? Those engineers know how much dynamite to use. But does it go on all the time? No. They knock off at midnight, and they don't start again until six in the morning. Six in the morning? Oh, we can't stay here, Ruth. Listen, in New York, you either live A, over a subway, or B, where they're building a subway, or you don't live in New York. Stop double-talking and give us our rent money back. What are you getting hysterical about? I said I would give you your money back, and I will, if at the end of the month you are still dissatisfied. Good night, ladies. Sleep tight. Oh, Ruth, what are we going to do? Do? We're going to do 30 days in this dump, Eileen. Oh, gosh, shall I put out the lights now? Yes, put them out. All right. Ruth, I just put out the lights, but it's still light. Hmm? Uh oh, so it is. Oh, there's a lamppost right in front of the window. Well, then pull the shade down. There isn't any shade. No shade? Oh, but Ruth, in this basement room, we're practically sleeping in the street. Just wait till I get that Apopolis boy. Ooh, what my hat my gandy would give for this bed. Would it help any to close the window, Ruth? Uh, if we do, we'll suffocate. Golly, I'm afraid, Ruth. You know, a, a dog could chase a cat down here. And probably will. Oh, well, let's go to sleep. Maybe we can forget. All right. Good night, Ruth. Good night, Eileen. Sleep tight. I say I'm not going back, and that's all. <laughs> Why not? Well, they'll suck us for another cover charge. No, they won't. Listen. You can take both of those dames and... You go away from there, you... you drunken loafers! Hey! A dame! Look, a dame down there in the window! You go away from there, or we'll call the police! Another dame! Hey, look, Pete, there's two dames. One for you, two. And you go away! Uh, uh, that one's mine. Okay. My name's so bad. You get away from here! Hello, cutie! Go away, go away, go away! 
I'm fit as a fiddle and ready for love. Oh, Ruth, close the window. Me close the window. No, no, you don't do it, Ruthie. I'd rather see her close it. Oh, Ruth, please. Leave me in, I'll close it. Come on, honey, come to Papa. You take your hands out of here, I'll bust them off. Here, here, what's going on here? Come on, break it up, break it up. Oh, we're well, just a social visitor's office. We was just going. Good night. Go on, get out of here, go on. Oh, I'm awfully glad you came, officer. Yeah, I'll bet you are. Oh, officer, do you think you could do something about that lamppost? It shines right in here. Sure. I'll put a shade on it. <laughs> Say, ain't you new in this neighborhood? We just moved in today. Well, if you're smart, you'll move out tomorrow. I'm particular what goes on on my beat. I'm warning you. Did you... Did you hear what he said, Eileen? Yes. Yes, I did, Ruth. I'm afraid. Oh, move over, darling. I I'm getting in bed with you. Now, don't worry, dear. Everything's going to be all right. It it's... It's just different in this town, that's all. It's... It's just New York. And that was the beginning of our new life in New York, in a one-room basement apartment in Greenwich Village. But life couldn't go on all night. There had to come dawn and the search for work. I went uptown to see the editor of a magazine, and while I was sitting with my manuscript in the reception room, a door slammed open. And who should come out with a wild look in his eye but Mr. Baker? Can you read? Uh, oh, uh, of course I can read. Do you read? Yeah, and write, yes. Never mind writing. Everybody writes in New York, even people who can't read. Well, I happen to be from Columbus. That's very interesting. Now, think carefully. Have you ever read our magazine, The Man Hatter? Well, not for some time. Good. Come with me. What the... What's this? Mr. Craven, meet Miss... What's your name? Miss Sherwood, Ruth Sherwood. Miss Sherwood. She can read from Columbus, Ohio. Miss Sherwood, in your time, you have read The Man Hatter. Is that true? Yes. Do you like it? No. Good. Wait a minute. Who is this girl? Miss Sherwood of Columbus. What's the difference? A lot of difference, my clever friend. What's she doing here? Where did you find her? Outside, sitting down. I asked what she was doing there. Miss Sherwood, the gentleman is trying to make a point of some kind. Tell him. Tell us all. What were you doing out there? I, uh... I was trying to submit a manuscript. That's all I want to know. Good day, Miss Columbus. Mr. Baker can pay you off outside. Get out. I certainly will. I've had a hard day, and I'm darn sick of you and your magazine. Hard day. <laughs> e gods, that's what I thought, until I got back to that air-conditioned packing case we called home. Yes? Ah, hello. Hello. Oh, you're the new girls, huh? Well, my name's Loomis. My wife and I live upstairs. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Loomis? Oh, leave out the mister. Call me Wreck. Wreck? Yeah, that's what they called me at Georgia Tech. Hey, is your sister home? Oh, uh, I expect her any minute. Good. My wife and I want to talk something over with you. Oh, spaghetti and meatballs, huh? I, I smelled them coming past yesterday. Oh, yes. They taste a lot better the second day. Hey, watch me tackle that mess maker's dummy. You're a football player, Mr. Red. Yeah, yeah. When I'm in season, yeah. Uh, well, hello. Oh, company, Eileen? Oh, no, Ruth. Uh, this is the wreck. Physically or mentally? <laughs> You're Eileen's sister, huh? I live upstairs with my wife, see? Now, look. Helen's mother's coming to visit her, which straight arms me right out into the alley. Well, haven't you enough room? Oh, we could make room, only you see, she doesn't know we're married, and Helen's afraid to tell on account of I'm not working now. But I start working as soon as the professional football season opens, and in the meantime, we thought you wouldn't mind putting me up in your kitchen. Why, sure. Uh, you mean sleep in our kitchen? Sure, sure, why not? I'm a handy guy to have around in case something happens anyway. Well, thanks, girls, you don't know how much you're helping us. I'll get my stuff together right away. <laughs> Something tells me, Eileen, you weren't quite ready to leave Columbus. <laughs> now what? Oh, that must be Frank. Who? Frank Lippincott. He works at the soda counter in the drugstore. I met him today, Ruth, and he gave me my lunch for nothing. <laughs> Please be very nice, Ruth. Well, what am I, Tugboat Annie? 
come in. Well, here I... Oh. Oh, gee, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know there was a... I guess you're Eileen's sister. I can see a resemblance, all right. Why, I, I'm very flattered. Of course, you're a different type. Yeah, I see what you mean. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Lippincott. Eileen's been telling me about your drugstore. Has she? Oh, gee, it's a nice drugstore. Mm, yes, I'm sure it is. Oh, oh, hello, Eileen. Hello, Frank. I brought you something. It's California red wine. I, I thought it'd go good with the spaghetti. It's a special we're running this week. So's our spaghetti. Huh? Oh, I, I, I bet you're famished, Frank. Uh, dinner's almost ready. Oh, here we go again. Come in. I'm looking for a party uh, called Sherwood. Eleanor Sherwood? You mean Eileen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, hello there, honey. Why, Chick. Oh, Ruth, honey, this is Chick. He's a reporter. He, he interviewed me today. You had a busy day, Eileen. Hot, isn't it? Yeah, but you'll cool off. <laughs> Are you staying for dinner, Mr. Uh... I'll stick around. Uh, what's that stuff? Why, that's a gift from Mr. Lippincott. Wine, I believe. Well, let's have some. I'll pour. Oh, thank you, dear. Perhaps we should ice the wine. Oh, no, no. It should be served at room temperature. Yeah. Well, then you better cook it for a couple of hours. <laughs> Why don't you come back when the new subway's finished? We expect a draft in here all day long. Well, here's to... to Eileen. Yeah. To you, gorgeous. <laughs> don't mind me. We don't. <laughs> Good Lord, what was that? Relax, relax. It's only the subway. Come on, I got you. Get in there. Oh, lay in. off me, you big ape. Oh, here we go. I forgot about the wreck. Oh, go, let go of me, you big slug. What were you doing running out in that alley in your nightshirt? Oh, will you tell this clown I'm okay? Yes, he's all right, uh, I hope. Oh, yes, he's just the, just the wreck. The what? I found him out in the alley with all those bedclothes. I think he's some kind of a fiend. You're crazy. I'm going to live here. Live here? In the kitchen. It's all right, officer. We know him. Oh, it's you two. I thought I warned you to move out of my beat. How dare wait you? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Officer, I don't know what you think, but if it's what I think you yeah, think... Yeah, see here, officer. And who do you think you are? I'll tell you who stop I am. Stop it. Stop it. Never mind who anybody is. What difference does it make? Anybody walks in here. Everybody walks in here. You know, for a place with a bad location and no neon sign, we're doing a whale of a business. Oh, who's that? Oh, Mr. Baker from the magazine. Good evening, Miss Sherwood. I've read your manuscript. You left it behind today. I'd like to discuss it. What? I said I read your manuscript. I'd like to discuss it with you. Yes. That's what I thought you said. Oh! Oh, she's fainted. My sister has fainted. Oh, Ruth. Ruth! In a moment, we will continue with the second part of Academy Award. You all know how much careful production means to your enjoyment of a motion picture. Well, it's true of a dental cream, too. That's why the production of Squib Dental Cream, like that of the entire great family of Squib products, is governed by exacting scientific standards. That's why more than 100 separate tests are made to guarantee the purity and uniformity of this quality dentifrice. And you can taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. The delightful minty flavor of Squib Dental Cream is so cool, so invigorating, it leaves a real tingle in your mouth. And Squib Dental Cream helps to uncover all the natural sparkle of your smile because the active ingredient is one of the safest, softest, yet most effective polishing agents known to dental science. Try it yourself. Ask for Squib Dental Cream. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. In a moment, you will hear part two of My Sister Eileen. But first, for making this story available, we want to thank Columbia Pictures, who are also producers of Gilda, starring Rita Hayworth. Oh. 
And now the House of Squibb presents part two of Academy Award, starring Rosalind Russell and Janet Blair in My Sister Eileen. So you see, I'm not going to quit. Anybody can walk out. That's easy. I'm going to stay and fight Craven to a finish. I think that's just fine, Mr. Baker. I also think it's four o'clock in the morning. Good night. Hey, hey, wait a second. I was only letting off steam. Look, I fainted once tonight from people letting off steam. And I thank you for the spaghetti and meatballs. It was a great treat for me tonight, especially since we've been living on them for a week. <laughs> Why didn't you say something? Because I couldn't get a word in edgewise. I couldn't even remind you that I'm an author. And I wrote some stories, remember? About Columbus. Sure. And I read them. Hmm. It took till four o'clock in the morning to find out they weren't even worth mentioning. I don't know what you're talking about. They're very good. They are? Well, sure. Well, why didn't you say so? Didn't I? No. Why, you write like an angel. You know, these stories are quite good. Oh, just quite good. Isn't that good enough? You mean, if you could publish them, you, you wouldn't? No, I wouldn't. You see, the people are good, but the stories are flat. And that's because not enough happens to you. Uh, oh, it doesn't, eh? That's what I said. You can't lead a quiet, sheltered quiet, life and expect... Quiet, sheltered? Down in that tunnel? With subway blasts? And a populace, our Rasputin landlord, cheating us blind? With Eileen dragging home newspaper geniuses and drugstore managers and anything else she happens to meet up with in the course of a day? With football players drifting through, not for no reason at all, did you stay sheltered? Why, that's it. That's it. That's exactly the stuff. Write it. Write what? Write about your life in a Greenwich Village apartment. Eileen, the blast, the whole menagerie. Why, it's wonderful. Oh, I see what you mean. Why, why, sure. And so, that was what happened. That was what happened to me, to me, and my sister, Eileen. There, it's finished. What, the tunnel? No, the book. Say, Ruth, you, you seem so terribly down today, and golly, if you start feeling that way... Well, who's going to hold me up? Oh, I'm not worried about I, you, Eileen. Not while there's a man alive. But after all, Ruth, men are only an escape. Comes another escape. Sherwood residence. Miss Ruth Sherwood. For me? Ruth, it's Chick's paper. Hello? Yes? This is she. Her. She. <laughs> what? Uh, yes. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sand Street, Brooklyn? Yes. Yeah, I, I've got it. Sure, I understand. Uh, thanks. Gee. Uh, what is it? What's going on? You're going to give me a chance to show what I can do. An assignment to, to cover over in Brooklyn. Well, what happened over in Brooklyn? A Portuguese ship. Merchant Marine with a load of young cadets. They want a human interest story on it. Gee. Oh, Eileen, uh, where is Brooklyn? Oh, it's, uh, it's, um... Oh, well, you can't miss it. Oh, thanks. That's a help. Hello, gorgeous. Oh, uh, hello, Chick. Well, how did you get in here? Your back door lock is busted. Uh, oh, well, uh, gosh, you scared me half to death. Oh, take it easy, sugar. I happened to see Ruth ducking into the subway, and I thought maybe Gorgeous is alone. Oh, I see. Well, uh, she's on her way to Brooklyn, and oh, I, I, I do want to thank you for getting that assignment for her, Chick. Oh, forget it. Now let's get your future straightened out. Uh, Will uh, you stand still, please? Uh, well, I've been waiting for that interview to be published, Chick. This week, sugar. Oh, uh, well, gee, thanks. Uh, don't you think you better go now? Go? After I went and fixed it to get you alone without that eagle-eyed sister of yours around? Oh, uh, you framed my sister. Now, don't get tragic. Oh, you get out of here. Now, that's silly. After all, I've tried to do for that sister of yours. Oh, go away. Take your hands off of me. Uh, stop playing coy, sugar. Stop it, please. Oh, come in, come in. Oh, Mr. Bates. 
Baker. Well, I'm certainly glad to see you. And now, Mr. Clark, will you kindly get out? I think I'd do as the lady says, Clark. Sure. Little hot for wrestling anyway. Oh, Mr. Baker. Oh, no, 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 no. You're, you're all right. Oh, I, I really don't know what I'd have done. Oh, there, there. Sit right down. Hmm? Right over there. Oh, Mr. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Yes. <laughs> Eileen. So, where is it? Where is it, I say? Where is what, Mr. Apopolis? My picture, my painting, my life blood, my career, my work, my art. Ye gods, it must be somewhere. I remember painting it, framing it, but where did it, where did I hang it? Who was that? That was Mr. Apopolis, our landlord. Honey, open the door! Open the door! For heaven's sakes, what's the matter, Ruth? We're outnumbered, darling. The fleet's in. Ah, say so do it for Canis. Oh, oh do it for he's Canis. nice. Help me, help me get rid of them. Well, who are they, Ruth? Cadets from that Portuguese ship I interviewed. Well, what did you bring them in here for? We got trouble as it is. Bring them? They were on my trail ever since I left the Brooklyn dock. There were more than when we started out, but half of them got lost in the subway. Oh, oh, they're coming at me, Ruth. Help, help. Send up a rocket, honey. It's too late now. Five minutes. Eileen. Oh, Frank Lippincott. Gee, it was so sweet of you to come all the way down here to see me. Gee, this is the first time I've ever been in a jail. You don't say. Imagine why we're thrown in the clink twice every week. <laughs> well, if you want an explanation for this, Frank, you can go right now. Oh, no, no. I, I was bringing you this anyway. Chocolate-covered cherries. A special we're running this week. Oh, thank you. You are the sweetest boy. Oh, I'm glad you think so. Because I made an important decision today. And it's just as well that your sister's here, too. Why? Why, Frank? Oh, th this, this is hardly the place for a proposal. Yeah, oh, no, no, it wasn't that. It wasn't? No. No, you see, I, I suddenly realized that I was wasting my life. Now, you girls have the right idea. Follow your natural bent, whatever it is. So... So I'm ready for the bohemian life. Why, how dare you? We're not bohemian. No, we're not. We're a couple of girls from Columbus, Ohio, who are here trying to make a living. And that's all we're here for. Mr. Baker to see you. Ruth, Eileen. Bob. Bob. Hold everything. I didn't know you knew Mr. Baker. Why, of course, Ruth. We had a delightful time this afternoon, didn't oh. we, Bob? Uh, I, uh... Hey, 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 I'll go out and talk to the man about bail. <laughs> See, a little while, girls, just a little while. Move on, you guys, clear the hall. Other people want to visit in jail here. What now, officer? Mr. Sherwood from Columbus, Ohio, to see you. Dad! Oh, Dad! Oh, Dad, me. Did you have to come all the way to New York to land in jail? What's the matter with our jail back home? <laughs> it isn't the jail, Dad. It's, it's well, uh... Well, they've got better reasons in New York for putting you in. Hurry up, girls. Finish your packing. We're going back to Columbus. Yes, Dad. Okay, Dad, we're packing. Well, nobody can say we haven't lived in this dump while we were at it. And it's so nice and quiet today. Oh. Good heavens, what was that? 
Come on, we'll run for the street. It's just a subway, Dad. They're digging it closer all the time. Oh, subway, huh? Ruth, Ruth. Bob. Where have you been? I've been calling all day. Well, they took the phone out. What are, you do- what are you doing packing? You can't go. See, here, who are you? Never mind who I am. This girl stays in New York. Look, I publish a story, the lead story in this issue of The Man Hatter. You're made. Oh, Bob. Hold it. Oh, don't faint. It's true. Where is she? Mr. Craven came along with a contract. Now, see here, I've made up my mind. I, I, who is he? My, my father, Mr. Baker, Mr. Craven. Where is it? I've sourced everywhere. I am this. Uh, Mr. Apopolis, my father. Say, Ruth, my wife wanted to know if... Oh, company? <laughs> the, the wreck from Georgia Tech. Now, look here, Mr. Sherwood. We're going home. You can't go home. Ruth and I have a great deal of work to do. It may take years. Maybe a lifetime. Bob. Sign this contract. I want an entire series of the Eileen stories. Oh, a series? Sure, sure, sure. Where do I sign? Right here. Well, what about me? Huh? Oh, you. That's it. I'll sign this contract if you get my sister Eileen a job in the theater. What? Yes or no. Right. Yes or no. Oh, Mr. Craven. Why, you must know just just everybody. Why, I... Why, certainly, I... uh, Go ahead, uh, sign that contract. I'll, uh... I'll take care of your sister. Yes, indeed. Uh, Now, listen here. I'm the father of these girls, and I say we're going to go... Oh, oh, look! A man is coming up through the floor. Hey! Hey, where am I? Hey, please! We let the last one go in the wrong place. This ain't the subway no more. It's some damn apartment. Today, hungry men, women, and children all over the world have received new hope from America, from all of us who will get along with less food so that others may have more from our doctors and scientists who have developed new, more effective medical aids for the sick and starving. Perhaps you've heard of the new developments in protein derivatives called amino acids. Through exhaustive research, clinical study, and constantly accelerating production, the House of Squibb is making important contributions in this field. To people who have known the ravages of starvation, amino acids will help restore health-building proteins quickly, speeding the return of full strength to wasted bodies. Because amino acids promise to become an even greater boon to mankind, the House of Squibb is devoting the vast energies of its scientists and laboratories to further development and production of protein derivatives, continuing the endless quest for perfection that lies behind all Squibb products. One more reason why, to families and physicians alike, Squibb is a name you can trust. Next week, another great picture. The House of Squibb will present Academy Award starring Victor McLaughlin and an all-star cast in The Informer. Today's performance of My Sister Eileen was written for radio by Frank Wilson with an original musical score composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Our producer-director is Dee Engelbach. Rosalind Russell, whose performance as Ruth you enjoyed today, may soon be seen as Sister Kenny in the RKO production of the same name. Janet Blair, who played the role of Eileen today, appeared through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures. You will be interested to know that Janet Blair will soon be seen co-starring with Glenn Ford in Columbia's new picture, Gallant Journey. The further adventures of Ruth and her sister Eileen is now being prepared by Arthur Curlin for production next fall as a radio series starring Lucille Ball. This is Hugh Brundage bidding you good night until next week at the same time when you're invited to listen again to Academy Award, presented by the House of Squibb, a name you can trust. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.